these remarkable bridges are able to unite distant places and bring communities together. With construction costs often reaching billions of dollars, these structures have facilitated enormous economic development and growth. So in today's video, we're going to explore some of the most ambitious bridges ever constructed. Let's take a look at the top 15 most incredible bridge mega projects in the world. Number 15. Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge Manila is one of Asia's most dynamic cities, and soon its hallmark Manila Bay will be connected by a superstructure known as the Bataan-Cavite Interlink Bridge. Set to link the provinces of Bataan and Cavite, this 32-kilometer long bridge will decrease the travel time between the two areas from 5 hours to just 40 minutes, massively increasing efficiency. However, at an estimated cost of $3.6 billion, building it won't be cheap. Number 14. The Keswachaka Bridge While this may seem simple, the Keswachaka Bridge gets a spot on this list thanks to the fact that it's been rebuilt every year for five centuries. Hanging over Peru's Apurimac River, it used to be one of many Inca suspension bridges along the Great Inca Road. However, modern roads have largely replaced the ancient roadway, and due to its very remote location, the Quesquachaca Bridge is the only one left standing. Every year, the old one is cut loose and a new one is built in a three-day-long ceremony, and today, the bridge is a symbol of connection and resilience. Number 13. Storstrom Bridge Denmark. It's a country with a lot of islands, and soon, the nearly 4-kilometer-long Storstrom Bridge is set to connect Zealand to the island of Falster. Currently, an 86-year-old bridge exists on the route, however, it's in very poor condition, and this new bridge will be its replacement. While initially set to be completed by 2022, a 27-month project extension and an extra $502 million in funding was requested in order to finish the project by July. Number 12. Fourth Mainland Bridge While Africa does have its fair share of big bridges, soon Nigeria's fourth mainland bridge is set to be one of the continent's largest. It's currently being built by a consortium of Chinese companies. This 37-kilometer-long structure will be run between Lagos Island and Lagos City and be the second longest bridge in all of Africa. This bridge will be important, as it will cut down Lagos's notorious congestion, and if completed on time and on budget, it should be finished by 2027 at a cost of around $2.5 billion. Number 11. Africa's Longest Bridge while still not under construction just yet, the government of Tanzania has recently got the ball rolling on one of Africa's biggest mega-projects. That's because they've recently announced that they will be trying to build Africa's longest bridge. While the plans are still in too early a stage to know all the specific details, what we do know is that it's set to stretch for about 50 kilometers in order to connect Tanzania's major city of Dar es Salaam to Zanzibar Island. Now, at the moment, Tanzania is in advanced talks with the China Overseas Engineering Group, and when all is said and done, it will likely cost around $2.7 billion. However, only time will tell whether or not this plan will ever come to fruition. Number 10. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Railway In 1998, Bangladesh built the Bangabandhu Bridge to connect the capital of Dhaka to its northern regions. Now, it facilitates both train lines and roadways. It was the 11th longest bridge in the world when opened and ran relatively well for about 10 years. That's because in 2008, cracks began to show in a very real sense. It turned out that the bridge had not been adequately built, and as a result, the bridge began to crack. In an effort to slow down this cracking, the government limited the amount of cars that could use the bridge, while also reducing trains to just 38 per day and train speeds to just 20 kilometers an hour in order to reduce the amount of stress on this structure. While repair efforts such as the replacement of modular expansion joints, strengthening of the deck, and the sealing of non-structural cracks had all taken place, it became clear that this solution wasn't tenable long term. In comes the Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Railway Bridge. Built to relieve pressure, it's set to run for 4.8 kilometers over the Jumuna River. Currently about 65% complete, it's set to be finished in 2025 and will cost a grand total of about $1.6 billion. While the price tag may be steep, the end result will be pretty incredible, as once the dual-gauge double track is completed, a grand total of 88 trains will run over it at speeds of between 100 and 120 kilometers an hour. As such, so long as it doesn't crack, this bridge will be a massive asset for the region. Number 9. The Kekongo-Bususi Bridge 
Tanzania, it's easily one of Africa's most stable and economically prosperous countries, and so it makes sense that it's home to one of the continent's most ambitious construction projects. This project is the Kagongo Bususi Bridge, and it's set to stretch for 3.2 kilometers across the Gulf of Mwanza. At this current moment, the construction is crucial. After all, right now, the only way to get across the Gulf is to take a rather inefficient ferry service. Used by about 1,600 cars per day, this ferry takes 35 minutes to cross the Gulf. However, once the bridge is built, the travel time is expected to fall to just 4 minutes, while the capacity is set to skyrocket to about 10,000 cars a day. This amounts to nearly a 700% increase in capacity and an 88% decrease in travel time, and this in turn should be an economic boon to the area. To date, the project has run rather smoothly, expected to be finished now by 2024. The bridge is reportedly 47% complete, and to date it's created about 800 new jobs in the area. Once it's finished, it's said to be the longest bridge in East Africa and the sixth longest in Africa, and by all accounts, it will be a vital piece of infrastructure. Yet despite all these positives, the Kigongo Bususi Bridge has had some controversy. This is because back in 2019, Tanzania made the decision to contract the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation and China Railway 15th Bureau to lead the design and construction of the structure. Since these companies are both owned by the Chinese state, many fear that the bridge is part of China's larger plan to increase its influence and dominance in the region. However, only time will tell how this bridge will affect relations between Tanzania and China. Number 8. The Shenzhen Zhongshan Bridge At this current moment, China is in an interesting spot. While easily the world's second biggest economic and military power, it's starting to show some cracks, and it seems like the Shenzhen Zhongshan Bridge reflects both the highs and lows that the country is experiencing. Set to link Shenzhen and Zhongshan, the project itself is massive. It will stretch for 24 kilometers, and the eight-lane connection will feature artificial islands, an undersea tunnel, and a cost a staggering $6.7 billion, which is ambitious even by Chinese standards. Now, the bridge has been the darling of the state media machine, and in 2023 it set a new world record when workers paved more than 243,000 square feet of asphalt in a single day. For reference, that's the equivalent of more than 50 basketball courts. When finished, the bridge will also prove to be incredibly useful. You see, as of now, travel times between Jiangsan and the Shenzhen Baonau International Airport, which is China's third busiest, is a sizable two hours. Once completed, though, that travel time is expected to be cut down to just 20 minutes. However, the bridge also exposes China's identity problems. While it certainly does have an economic purpose, many critics have pointed out that the bridge is more political than practical, serving as a symbol of China's growing economic and political clout. Of course, this leaves the burning question. Is it really sustainable for a country to undertake what seems like an endless stream of vanity projects? In China's case, we may be near the end. After all, Chinese property megagiant Evergrande recently filed for bankruptcy, with fellow megagiant Country Garden not being far behind. To make matters worse, this bridge likely won't help turn things around for even the local economy. After all, Zhongshan is not a tourist or business hotspot, making it a little difficult to conceptualize how this bridge will justify the costs. However, only time will tell exactly what will happen in this area. Moving on to number 7, the 4th Panama Canal Bridge. In recent years, the United States has become increasingly isolationist, and this has allowed China to swoop in and become Panama's most important benefactor. This has in turn led to the $1.5 billion 4th Panama Canal Bridge being built under Chinese auspices. More specifically, after winning a contract in 2018, a consortium between the China Harbor Engineering Company and the China Construction Communications Company have been building the bridge. Set to be 3 kilometers long and pass for 75 meters above the Panama Canal, it will be an essential transport link in the region. However, this leaves us with an important question. How did former American stalwart Panama get so cozy with China? Well, to figure that out, we have to travel all the way back to 1979. You see, it was in this year that the United States finally decided to recognize the People's Republic of China over Taiwan. However, despite doing this, they urged Central and Latin America countries to remain loyal to Taiwan, and for decades, American loan and redevelopment money ensured that they did. 
However, in recent years, the United States has started to roll back this aid, and under the Trump administration, many diplomatic roles in Central America were simply left unfilled. This allowed China to come in and fill that gap. In the case of Panama, after swapping recognition of Taiwan to China in June of 2017, in 2018, it went ahead with this Chinese-backed bridge. As a result, China now has intimate access to the Panama Canal, which is one of America's most important strategic assets. This could, in turn, lead to some pretty severe security breaches if left unchecked. Worst of all, if the United States gets its act together in Central America, these types of deals will only continue to become more popular. As such, if the United States is serious about countering Chinese expansion into the Americas, it has to be willing to put up the monetary and diplomatic effort necessary to make that happen. Number 6. The Gordie Howe International Bridge if you've ever been to the U.S.-Canada border crossing between Detroit and Windsor, you know that the wait time to get across can be extremely long. However, with the addition of the all-new Gordie Howe International Bridge, these wait times will dramatically decrease. You see, at the moment, the crossing is served by the nearly 100-year-old Ambassador Bridge. While still serviceable, the bridge has two critical issues. First and foremost, its capacity has been increasing by about 4% per year and this large jump has been hard for the current bridge to sustain. However, perhaps more importantly, the Ambassador Bridge has a major planning deficiency on the Canadian side. That's because rather than connect to a highway, it connects to city streets, wasting driver time and causing congestion. The new bridge is intended to improve many of these deficiencies of the old bridge. First and foremost, it will connect to Canada's Highway 401, allowing cars to easily enter and exit the country. It will also have three lanes on each side to improve traffic, and unlike the Ambassador Bridge, will have special multi-use paths that will accommodate pedestrians and cyclists. Perhaps most importantly of all, the bridge will be publicly rather than privately owned, therefore allowing both the Canadian and American governments to make sustainable revenue from it. This is a big deal, since the current Ambassador Bridge is privately owned. Beyond its practical use, this bridge will also be unique due to its size. After all, its main span of 853 meters will make it the longest main span of any cable-stayed bridge in North America, while its total length of 2.5 kilometers will make it one of the top five longest bridges in America. It's also worth noting that naming the bridge after Gordie Howe was rather clever. A legend in the sport of hockey, Gordie Howe was one of the best Canadians to ever play the game. However, at the same time, he also spent virtually his entire career with the Detroit Red Wings. Therefore, naming the bridge after someone who's a hockey legend at both sides of the border was a nice touch. Number 5. The Qatar-Bahrain Causeway In 2008, plans to build a massive Middle Eastern bridge were announced, known as the Qatar-Bahrain Causeway. It was to connect the two Arab states of Qatar and Bahrain with a massive 40-kilometer-long bridge. The plan was for the bridge to feature both a road and a rail connection, and it would have been the natural extension of the King Fahd Causeway that connects Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, thus linking the entire region. This would have in turn cut the travel time between Qatar and Bahrain from 5 hours to just 40 minutes, thereby promoting free trade and economic activity between the two states. Set to be a joint venture between Qatar, France, and Germany, the consortium put together was ready to put down $2.3 billion to make the project happen in turn making it one of the region's grandest projects. However, on June 5th of 2017, a diplomatic incident caused all of those plans to be put on pause. While the exact reasons for the break aren't 100% clear, the general gist is that for years, Saudi Arabia and Qatar have been at odds. Though relatively liberal publications such as Al Jazeera, its tacit support of Iran, and implicit support of the Arab Spring, Qatar has consistently managed to anger their Saudi neighbors. This led to all the states in the region taking sides, and as part of this break, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, and most importantly, Bahrain, severed all diplomatic ties with Qatar. This in turn caused construction on the Qatar-Bahrain causeway to promptly be put on pause. However, there seems to be some movement towards a potential end to this conflict. That's because in March of 2022, Bahrain's Ministry for Land Transportation published an official statement saying that, quote, We in the Kingdom of Bahrain renew the call for the start of bilateral talks between the two sides in accordance with the mechanisms agreed upon in the Al Ula statement, end quote. Since this diplomatic crisis, the blockade imposed by Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, and its allies has also been lifted, signaling a potential change of pace. 
However, the stark reality is that neither side has done anything to address their respective differences. As a result, only time will tell whether or not Qatar will choose to re-engage in talks to continue to construct this bridge. Number 4. The 1915 Chanakale Bridge while construction on this megaproject may have ended recently, its sheer size and scale earns it a spot on this list. Known as the 1915 Chanakale Bridge, it was opened on March 18th of 2022, and it's one of the few on this list to be a record breaker. It holds the record for having the world's longest span, as its one main span comes in at an impressive 2,023 meters in length and connects the two sides of the Dardanelles Strait. As you might expect, having a 2,023 meter length was no happy accident. A pride project of Turkish President Erdogan, this bridge is meant to inspire national pride. Beyond simply being a grand structure, the name 1915 Çanakkale is a nod to the Turkish name for the Gallipoli campaign of World War I, whereby the Ottoman Navy crushed that of France and Britain. The 2,023 meter length is also symbolic, as it commemorates the 100th year anniversary of the Turkish Republic, which happened this year in 2023. Beyond its symbolic value, though, the bridge is also very practical. For most of Turkey's history, it would have taken hours to travel between each side of the Dardanelles. However, thanks to this bridge, the travel time has been cut down to a mere six minutes. This should, in turn, help to boost economic activity in the region by allowing cars and trucks to cross without entering Istanbul, which is a city infamous for having some of the worst traffic in all of Europe. Yet all this grandeur came at a price, costing a total of $2.7 billion to build and a ridiculously high $15 to cross it. Nothing about the bridge is cheap. But this makes sense given the fact that it was extremely difficult to build. After all, the area is prone to high winds and high seismic activity, and so in order to counter that, the bridge had to make use of a twin box girder design and other important features in order to stay standing. These features are also necessary to facilitate the bridge's immense height. After all, the bridge's deck height of 73 meters is so tall that high-stack container ships and cruise ships can pass under it with ease, meaning the bridge's overall height of 318 meters makes it a sight to behold and, by most accounts, an example of excellent engineering at work. Number 3. Eco Bridges so, while most of the bridges on this list are intended for human passengers, France is now creating a series of ecological underpasses that will benefit our furry friends. You see, between 2021 and 2023, the plan is to build a grand total of 19 new eco-ponts or eco-bridges over motorways operated by France's APRR. Costing about $86 million, the purpose of an eco-bridge is to reduce the amount of roadkill ending up on French highways. Now, this is accomplished by creating a pathway where animals can cross on top of a highway, allowing them to get from point A to point B without interacting with cars. Now, exactly what eco-bridges entail depends from bridge to bridge. For example, while France's earliest eco-bridge, built all the way back in 1960, was rudimentary, today's models are often quite deluxe. For example, an eco-bridge under construction to connect forests in Burgundy is 25 meters wide complete with a pond for frogs and other amphibians, has opaque wooden fence sides to shield the passing critters from the glare of headlights, and carefully features laid piles of rocks and branches and landscape vegetation. To top this off, pedestrians are banned from using it, thus ensuring that the animals who use it aren't bothered in any way. However, it's not just animals, but also humans that benefit from these bridges. After all, if animals such as deer and moose have safe crossings, they're less likely to be involved in car accidents, saving lives and reducing damage and delays on the roads. This result has been borne out in the numbers as well. At Banff National Park in Canada, the implementation of an eco-bridge program reduced animal-related car accidents by a whopping 80%. On a wider scale, though, eco-bridges are necessary in today's modern world because they help herds of animals use natural migration routes cut off by roads. They allow species of animals to more easily adapt to pressures of human development, therefore allowing these species that are vulnerable or endangered to have a better chance of surviving. Best of all, eco-bridges aren't limited to use by land animals. For example, there are some that are specially designed underwater channels to support fish and amphibians, while canopy bridges and viaducts to help protect flying species. So yeah, there is truly no limit to the positive potential of these eco-bridges. Number 2. The Bjornafjord Bridge 
Norway is a country that's covered with large fjords. These are essentially super long and deep canyons created by glaciers, and while they are naturally beautiful, they make driving an absolute nightmare. After all, Norway's current national highway, which is known as the E39, is an 1,100-kilometer route that features a grand total of seven ferry crossings, taking it about 21 hours to cross in its entirety, making cross-country travel far too inefficient. In order to cut down on this commute, the Norwegian government is looking to spend $47 billion in order to update their national highway system. One of the pivotal pieces of infrastructure that will make things move along well is the one and only Bjornafjord Bridge. What makes this new bridge stand out is that it will use experimental technology that will allow bridges to be built across fjords. Now, I say experimental because rather than being built in a conventional way, the Bjornafjord Bridge is designed to float. You see, due to their weight, it's proven difficult to build bridges that reach the bottom of fjords. This Bjornafjord Bridge will change that dynamic by becoming the world's longest floating bridge. This design will support the bridge with the help of 38 floating pontoons, four of which will be tethered to the seafloor with cables. This will prevent the bridge from wobbling, while additional cables attached to each side of the fjord will further increase the stability. The end result will be a bridge that's about 5 kilometers long, and in terms of efficiency, it should be able to cut down the 40-minute ferry ride across the fjord to a simple 11-minute drive. In terms of sustainability, the plan is for the bridge to last 100 years. In case any area of the bridge becomes damaged, each part is to be replaceable so the bridge can be completely refitted when necessary. And while this plan may sound a little crazy, it turns out that this type of technology has already been used to help support oil platforms in the past. As a result, architects are confident that the design could work in waters that are as deep as 1,500 meters. However, the state of Norway is still in the process of getting things off the ground. So only time will tell whether or not this design will work out. Number 1. The Strait of Messina Bridge Ever since the ancient Roman era, Italians have dreamed of creating a bridge to link the southern region of Calabria to the island region of Sicily across the Strait of Messina. According to Pliny the Elder, Roman consul Metellus was the first to do so. After all, all the way back in 252 BC, he reportedly strung together a bunch of barrels and wood to create a temporary bridge that allowed a hundred war elephants to walk across the strait. And while plans have been made since then to recreate that gigantic effort with a more permanent bridge, ideas such as crafting a bridge or underground tunnel have all been floated just to fall flat. In fact, the bridge idea has been such a failure that there's a popular saying in Italian, similar to when hell freezes over, that translates to, I'll do it when the bridge to Messina is finished. However, after more than two millennia of waiting, Messina may finally get its bridge. While the proposal is currently in the process of going through Parliament, it seems to be the case that, bar a major recession, approval and construction should start soon. See, back in 2005, a conservative Italian government approved the creation of the bridge. However, once this government collapsed a year later, the new, more progressive government shot down the project due to it being considered to be too expensive and too harmful to the environment. However, Italy now has once again a more conservative government, and one of their major campaign promises was to build the bridge. If all goes to plan, the idea is that the bridge will be handed to the builders that won the contract back in 2005. These contractors claim they can get the work done quickly, and they testified that as soon as the contract is reinstated and updated, quote, the bridge over the Strait of Messina is a project that can break ground immediately. The executive design is expected to take eight months, while the time needed to build the bridge will be a little more than six years." End quote. The end result of this effort would be quite impressive. Set to cost about $7.4 billion and stretch for 3.2 kilometers, it would be the world's longest suspension bridge and come in at a length of nearly 1,300 meters longer than the current world record holder, which is Turkey's 1915 Çanakkale Bridge. However, despite the excitement, there's still some very real obstacles in the way. First and foremost, while the current plan has been tabled by the Italian company We Build, there's a very real chance that a foreign company may set forth a cheaper bid. If accepted, this would in turn cause even more delays as the new firm implements a new plan. There are also potential problems concerning the Mafia. Unlike some parts of Italy, the area around the Strait of Messina is a Mafia stronghold. Making a $7.4 billion investment is a risky endeavor. After all, while there have been some very significant arrests over the last few years, 
there is still pretty strong chance that transport and supply could fall under criminal control, leading to wasted resources and massive corruption. Above all, the geophysical situation is far from ideal. The Strait of Messina is along a fault line. The water currents are pretty rough and the winds can often be pretty extreme. This creates a very real risk that the bridge could collapse if the plans are anything less than perfect. As such, despite all the Italian government's promises, only time will tell whether or not this mega project will come into fruition. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.